hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you're doing very well in your respective places um i realized that i didn't share my experience about how i got a very good job in the best hospital in united arab emirates dubai that is american hospital dubai i had some very peculiar experiences about that and I think it will be insightful for one or two people if you can inspire even just one person to be able to land that dream job of their choice then I'll be very happy so that's the reason for today's video so stay tuned and get all the sheets and I'll tell you the lessons I learned at the end as well so in January 2022 while I was in Dubai I had just had my registered nursing license. So before getting to Dubai even, while I was still in Cameroon, I did a, a search, a Google search of the best hospitals in Dubai. And I came across a I had came across a handful of them. And there was this particular hospital, I think two of them, Mediclinic and American Hospital Dubai, that I was really envisaging to work in. So when I got my license and I started throwing out my applications out there. Fortunately, by God's special grace, I was able to get a call. So I had had um, an offer with MediClinic. So this video, I'm going to partition it into three parts. First, the application process. Second, the interview. And third, onboarding process and how I started working in American Hospital Dubai. So let's dive right in. Before coming to Dubai, American Hospital Dubai was one of my ideal hospitals to work in. I did a lot of research when I was still in Cameroon about the best hospitals in Dubai. So when I got there, I started applying even before I got my license. I didn't get any call, but I didn't stop. So when I got my license, I kept applying as well to the hospital and to other hospitals. But one peculiar thing with this particular hospital, which was where I really wanted to work at, was that when I was sending applications to this particular hospital, or to another big hospital made the cleaning, which was also like one, one of my ideal places I would like to work in. When they asked for a CV, I, off, I submitted the CV and a cover letter. Not just the cover letter, I addressed the cover letter to the human resource in charge of American Hospital Dubai. So these are ways of going a little extra mile from what others do. Most often people just send um, a resume randomly to any employer at times they will not customize their resume and at times they will not bother to send a cover letter especially if they say it's optional but when it comes to where i really want to work i planned i prepared my resume i customized it to the position i was applying for and i also arranged a cover letter i went to linkedin i went online and i searched for the human resource responsible for this position and i addressed that cover letter to the person i put the person's name dear mrs this and I wrote the cover letter very thoughtful, went through it, showed my husband, he went through, we validated, we put it in prayers and I submitted. So whenever I customize my CV and my cover letter this way, I keep getting calls. So almost, I think all the jobs I applied for, they called me back because they wanted me to work with them. But this American hospital and Mexicania, I had been told that it was very hard to get in without recommendation. But amazingly, I had an offer from Mexicania I turned it down because of American Hospital offer, which was better for sure. So that was how my application process was I applied. And within a week, I got a call. At the time, I was working as a PCR nurse, COVID-19 nurse. At that time, I was working as a COVID-19 outpatient nurse. So the job was getting so boring for me. And one of my dear friends and sisters, big shout out to you, my sister, a full name patient. I love you so much. You know that. So she told me, these people have not signed up, up yet. They have not made us visa. So you have a license. You can still apply to other places. So that's how I started applying again. And I customized my application package and everything. I sent it to these people. And after one week, I got a call to come for an interview. So the time for the interview was on a day where I had to work in this my PCR work. So I asked them, can we move the interview to another day? They said, they said, no, unfortunately, it cannot be moved. I said, okay, that's fine. I'll be there. So the interview was set for 3.30 p.m. I went there. I was there by 2.45. 
I sat immediately. I entered the hospital. That was my first time entering the hospital. I had been seeing it online. I'd done my research online. I knew it mentally online. But when I went there, I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is where I want to work." I mean, the infrastructure, everything is top notch, so beautiful. And I told myself, and I meditated in my heart. I said, "God, as I've come to this hospital for this intern." I will not leave this hospital without you giving me this job in Jesus' name. That was the conviction I said in my head, and I put everything in prayers. But before the interview, of course, I prepared very well for the interview. I did a lot of research. I watched a lot of videos, how to introduce yourself, how to answer, tell me about yourself, how to, how to, how to. I did a lot of research. So when I went for the interview, I was very confident. When I went for the interview, I think we were a couple of us, and I, I guess I was the second to the last person to be interviewed because the others were there before me. When I went into the interview room, I had three interviewers. So during the interview, they asked me questions. I answered my question. Tell me about yourself. What is your experience? How long have you worked as a nurse? Where have you worked here? And I told them I'm currently working in the PCR. And I love you very much. They are very good. But I want to do a clinical job. I feel that's where I thrive more at. I answered the question and they asked me to demonstrate um, hand washing procedure using an alcohol gel. In my mind, I was like, come on, ask me something better. <laughs> That's a piece of cake. And I did and they were like, awesome, wonderful. So they asked me a lot of other questions. Are you married? Do you have kids? I told them, yes, I'm married and I have three kids. I had three kids at the time. And after what they said, um, okay, we'll let you know if it's successful or not. Thank you so much for your time. So I went out. So while, when I stepped out, I just, out of curiosity, <laughs> please be careful, don't do this. Out of curiosity, I just put my ear, I leaned my ear against the door to like eavesdrop on what they were saying. And what they said was like, it melted my heart. I said, did you hear the way she answered the tell me about yourself question? Did you hear the way she articulated? Did you hear the way she responded to this interview this is just the person we are looking for and i was like god take control please grant me this and guys after three days i got a wonderful call congratulations email yeah it was an email followed by a call congratulations you have been selected i was like oh my goodness thank you lord jesus so one usual thing in uae is they always ask you for your your salary expectations some companies will ask you before the interview. So in this company, in American Hospital Dubai, I'll call it AHD. In AHD, it was the same. So during the call on phone, they asked, what's your salary expectation? I gave a very moderate range. I don't want to be overachieving. I don't want to sound like I was too desperate to ask for a very low amount. So I just gave a moderate range. And they said, okay. So during the after the interview, when I got the call, I was like, this is wonderful. They said, okay, we'll send you your... They said, we'll send you your job offer, which carries your job specifications and how much you'll be paid. And sign it and send it back if you are okay with it. God in heaven. Guys, I mean, when I saw that certificate, I was like, Jesus Christ. Are you serious? Are these guys kidding me? <laughs> like, is this how much they plan to pay me? I was like, God, this me. I said, God, you are too much. That's your... I just started shedding tears of joy and I called my husband and I showed him. I said, can you imagine this? He said, it's okay. God is faithful. Our God is wonderful. And I signed immediately. Why? What, was I, what, what am I waiting for? <laughs> it was much more than what I even gave us my salary expectation. So I was so, so, so happy. I signed and I sent it back. And that was it. After two weeks, they processed my visa because AHD is a very, very straightforward hospital. They don't employ you if you do not have a visa. So when they employ you, they make your work visa. They activate your license. So they made my visa, sent it to me, activated my license, sent me some forms to fill, asked me to send some documents. Everything was so organized. And I had to board on March 16, 2022. I, guys, I can't forget this day. So when I boarded that day and we met with the HR, they told us everything, how everything is done. They taught us how to punch in and punch out. I've never punched in and punched out before. No, in Cameroon, when you come to work, you write your name with your hands. So with them, you punch in and your name comes on, welcome. And when you want to go, you punch out and your name comes, by Fiona. So we learned how to do that. And they said they will give us uniforms. So they gave us uniforms. Guys, I mean five pairs of uniforms each. 
each person on board, they give five pairs of uniforms to the person. I mean, I went, I chose my size, new uniforms in packets. I chose my size. They gave me big, gave us huge plastics to put it in. When I was going home that day, my bag, I was carrying big plastic. And when I got in my husband, I was like, why did you go to the shop? <laughs> I said, no, this is, this is a uniform. So, and he was so surprised and we were so happy. The following day, I had to start working because the first was just for onboarding. Then the following day, I had to start working in my designated clinic. So I was so happy. It was like a dream come true for me. And I couldn't stop blessing God. I mean, until this moment, I still bless God because I'm just human. There is nothing I can do without the grace of God. So I was so grateful. So that was the inter the application part, the interview, then the onboarding. When I, when I started work, I noticed that I was the only black in the clinic I was working at because I was working at an outpatient clinic. America Hospital had, had seven satellite clinics at the time. So I was working at one of the satellite clinics. So I was working as an outpatient nurse. I go in the morning, come in the evening, so I don't spend the night there. So I was the only black there. And when I went, um, I think people kind of, some of my colleagues kind of looked at me like, who is this? What does this person know? Or who even brought this one here? Because like I mentioned, most often if you do not get recommendations, you can't get into American Hospital Dubai. And sadly for me, because when I entered, I was praying and hopeful that I would recommend so many people and they will, they will be hired. But unfortunately, I recommended a lot of my friends, sent their CVs, spoke to the HR, said, yeah, we'll see what to do, but they never called it. Honestly, I feel very bad about that. So when I got there, one of my colleagues asked me, she was like, who recommended you to work here? Which person in American Hospital? Or like, who do you know in American Hospital Dubai? And I told her, no, I don't know anybody at all. I just applied online and I was called. And she was like, hmm, impressive. So, yeah. So I noticed the environment around me also. It wasn't, it was quite a bit uncomfortable being the only black, then you're new. And you have to learn how to use electronic medical records. We don't use electronic medical records in Cameroon. <laughs> so that was my first time using it. But it was pretty easy because I'm very, very sweet computer. And, oh, and I was very willing to learn and get right into the process. So I noticed that there were some certain things that they would not tell me. They would speak in their language. And I was kind of aloof or like kind of just alone. And I, I got some silly slangs and complaints. But I told myself, I will not let this affect me. And I will not even let this affect my performance. Why? Because God brought me here. And no man is going to move me from here. No matter what. My husband always tell me that, forget about it, just do your work. And that's exactly what I was doing. So in order to be able to learn from these people who have worked there for years and who know the in and out of everywhere, and plus the fact that, for you to complete your probation successfully, you must get good remarks from your colleagues. I had to do better. So I told myself, I'll just act like I know nothing. I just want to learn from these people. And I wanted to teach me without reservations. So I was working. I was at their beck and call when they want to do any procedure or anything. I'm like, no, it's fine. Or when we are done with something, I'm like, no, don't worry. I'll clean up. When we go somewhere, I said, no, 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 it's fine. Let me do this. Let me do this. They will be the ones to tell me, go for lunch. I will never go for lunch. I'll wait until they say, no, Fiona, you should go for lunch. You have been working too hard. That was what I wanted. And we worked cordially. We worked very well. And at the end of my probation period, I got wonderful remarks from them. So there's always a way to go about something, especially if you feel that that is where you want to be. Because honestly, people will not always treat you the way you want to be treated, but you can always modify the way you respond to them. And that was my response. And honestly, I'm very happy I did respond that way. So that was my experience working in American Hospital Dubai. And I worked there until I left and I came here. Why? So at the end of the day, why am I sharing this? First, if you're applying for a job and you feel this is what you want to do, or this is where I want to work with all my heart, Go an extra mile. Do what others are not doing. If you want to have what others do not have or you want to achieve what others have not achieved, then you definitely have to do what others have not done before. So you have to go an extra mile. If they ask for a CV, put a CV on the cover letter. And if you want to address the cover letter, find someone who works in that hospital, in that clinic, in that organization. Go online. Go on LinkedIn. Search for them. Follow them on LinkedIn. 
address the cover letter to the person who is responsible or at least someone who works in that organization. That way, the hiring managers will like, okay, this is someone who really knows what they are doing and you stand out. So those are ways to really stand out. That's one. Two, if you are in a job search, make sure your LinkedIn profile is very up to date because a lot of people look at it. A lot of employers nowadays look at it. And if your LinkedIn profile is up to date, make sure you also follow those organizations, those companies, those people that you have interest to work with in the future. That way you start networking and it will be easy for you to ace a job. Three, when you get to a place of work, there are always ways around dealing with people. People behave differently, especially people from different cultural backgrounds. So you have to find a way to deal with it because if you go new to a place and you start bringing up complaints and some kind of attitude, you will be noticed before those who, are, who had already been there. And most often, they will take their side more than yours because they don't know you, you just came. But they have been there a long time. So you have to strategize, find a way. My mother always says, just act like a fool. So when you act like a fool, you achieve what you need to achieve. I'm not saying you should act like a, like a fool in every single situation. I'm just saying when you want to really achieve something and that is of great value to you, find another, find a better way of dealing with it. Yeah, like the Bible says, a quiet answer quietens anger. So if someone attacks you or acts in a kind of funny way to you, your response is what will determine the, the rest of the story. Honestly, that's my own take. So I hope this was able to inspire someone. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please join this family. That was my experience working in Dubai. And honestly, it was very good for me. It was very good for our family. And we are so happy that Dubai, we are so happy we spent the time we did in Dubai. And if we had to turn back the hands of time, we will choose to go to Dubai again. Thank you so much and see you in the next videos. Bye.